Welcome back to my Modern Warfare Remastered Gun Review. Last episode, we took a look at a World War II classic known as the MP44. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the XMLR, also known as the FAL. The XMLR is one of several new weapons to Modern Warfare Remastered. You're able to get this weapon through a bounty in the supply drop system. To be able to complete the XMLR weapon bounty, you must have the kickback assault rifle camo, altercation calling card, waffle reticle, lark character, foreshadow emblem, and point blank uniform. You can get these items by opening supply drops or spending salvage on them. You can get salvage by getting duplicate items or by opening rare supply drops where you get bonus salvage. With all that aside, it's time to get into the gun review. Taking a look at the damage, it does 40 up close and 30 at range, tying it in second with several other assault rifles in the category. Now even though it's on par with things such as the AK-47 or the M16, it definitely feels a lot more powerful when you're actually playing with the weapon. It feels like you're literally melting people. I can definitely understand people's viewpoints if they say that these supply drop weapons are pay to win because this weapon is pretty damn powerful and I could say easily that I think it competes with the M16. So if you're looking for an assault rifle that's pretty good in the damage category and it performs very well in game, definitely go with the XMLR. Now normally I would do the unlock level here but you could unlock it at really any level because it's a supply drop weapon like I said at the beginning of the video. You could unlock it pretty early on in your prestige. Or you can unlock it later on, like you could be fucking prestige one or two that you unlock this thing. So because it's a bounty and you can't unlock it at a certain level, I'm just going to leave this without a rank. So next up is the ammo capacity as well as the clip size, I always tie them together. So for the starting ammo you have 30 in the clip and 60 in reserve, and for the max ammo you have 30 in the clip and 180 in reserve tying it in second with several other assault rifles, as always. Now, I don't know if you guys are noticing this this far in the series, I'm sure you noticed a little bit earlier on, but a lot of the assault rifles tend to have similar statistics, however, they have them like interchanged, such as the AK-47 and the M4. They both have the same clip size, but the AK-47 is actually more powerful than the M4. However, for the XMLR, the clip size and the reserve ammo is definitely average as always. Um, but I normally recommend Bandolier anyway just so you can get the maximum ammunition because you're going to run out of ammo sooner than you think. You could be starting off and you're having the max ammo that you normally have without Bandolier. Five kills later, you waste ammo on a couple guys, you could be almost out. So that's why I always recommend Bandolier. Now moving down to the XMLR's reload speed, it takes 2.6 seconds when it is loaded, placing it in 5th. And when it is unloaded, it takes 3.3 seconds, placing it in 6th. Now, when you're playing the game, the reload speed is definitely not terrible. It's not as bad as something like an LMG, like I said last time with the MP44, which is down lower than this. Um, but it's not as fast as an M16, so it's not as efficient. However, it's only a second behind, so it's definitely not horrible. Now, moving down to the rate of fire, the XMLR fires at 625 rounds per minute, placing it in 7th, just above the MP44. Now, if you guys remember my last episode where we covered the MP44, I said that 600 rounds per minute actually fit the weapon because of the insane recoil that it has. Now, the XMLR has much more manageable recoil than the MP44, so if you guys want to put on double tap for it, I think it would still work really well if you want that increased rate of fire. However, I still stick with jug or stopping power personally. However, obviously it is coming in 7th because it is a pretty shitty rate of fire compared to things such as the M16 or even the M14 which has 1200 rounds per minute, which is insane for the weapon that it is. Now moving down to the final category of the gun review, which is recoil. The XMLR I think has low recoil and I'm going to say it's about the second lowest in the game tied with the M4 carbine. It's definitely much more manageable than other assault rifles, but I still think the M16 reigns superior because of the fact that it's a three round burst. Because with three round burst weapons, it's very easy to control because it's not continuous fire. It goes almost instantly right back to where you were shooting. But nonetheless, like I said, it's probably the second lowest in the game tied with the M4. It's very manageable, it's very consistent. It's not the MP44 where you're gonna be shooting at an enemy next thing you know you're aiming two feet away from the enemy. So, with all this in mind, where does the XMLR stand against all the other assault rifles in the game? In my opinion, I think it places second through the whole category. The only reason the XMLR is not first is because of one reason, and one reason only, the M16, which is the most superior gun in the game. But I can't sit here and lie and say that the XMLR almost made it in first. 
the argument towards pay to win weapons in Call of Duty is definitely becoming more and more legitimate in my eyes. After looking at the statistics and seeing that the XMLR almost beat the most superior weapon from COD 4, the fact that it did is pretty insane. You know, after using it in game and then looking at the stats, it's kind of, you know, obvious that this is the M16's first competitor, true competitor. It has very low recoil, it's manageable, it's powerful, it's, you know, it's perfect to be the competitor for it. It's insanely good. But with all of that aside, if you're looking for a powerful gun that's not the M16, definitely go for the XMLR because it's very, very good to use at pretty much any range, up close, long range, mid range, it's very good, very versatile. Now moving on to some recommendations for your class, I recommend the Red Dot, or maybe even the Suppressor, but the Red Dot mainly because it takes away those kind of eh iron sights, they're not the greatest in the game, and it'll definitely make it feel a little bit more like a laser beam. For perks, as always I recommend Bandolier, you can use Jug, Stopping Power, even Double Tap on this gun. Uh, for the third perk, you could use Steady Aim or Deep Impact, just something that's going to help boost your gun a little bit, even though it is definitely one of the most powerful guns in the game. But anyway guys, that's going to be about it for today's gun review. Next time we're going to be reviewing the last assault rifle in the category so far, the Boz 14. So yeah, if you enjoyed today's video, check out the playlist full of my gun reviews, I'm going to leave the link down in the description. Drop a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys next time.